Okay, thank you today for organising this event for the Nexus Forum group. And uh, you might be wondering why I've got the white clothes, whether I'm on an evangelistic mission or something like that. But this is the, uh, the standard dress uh, when we go to see uh, John of God, whether it's going to be in Brazil or it's going to be in, uh, on the international events, and of course, Sydney in, in November. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's marvellous, eh, isn't it? It's, it's, it's actually winter still. Yeah, not spring till tomorrow. Army day, so maybe that's a good omen, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're actually wearing our aura friendly clothes so that the entities can see our energy uh, more easily uh, because it's just a bunch of frequencies in aura and, and, and the different colours, and that's how they, they can analyze us so well, perhaps. Yeah, as I was saying, I'd like to approach <coughs> the John of God phenomenon from a Magpie House perspective. It does have special significance to us. Uh, it's one of the major inspirations for actually establishing Magpie House. Uh, and it's from the, um, the book, A Rego, The Surgeon of the, of the Rusty Knight, which uh, that's before John of God started doing his um, healing. Uh, I'll talk about that a bit more later. Um, yeah, John of God, the John of God phenomenon, Kaza, is non-denominational, uh, just like Magpie House, so it resonates with us. Uh, so you don't have to be Catholic to get healing, right? Unlike what some people might say. Uh, it's also, sometimes they call it the religion of spiritism, uh, but uh, I'm not even sure if spiritism is a religion. Spiritual non denomination, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I could feel that energy, well, we could feel that energy when we were over there. We blended in quite well. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm going to explain how the Magpie House mission, the, uh, the spiritual cinema, which is an open forum, we have uh, some pretty amazing discussions after the, some of the shows and we've been doing that for 10 years and also even the therapist team all blends in with the um, what I consider the, the John of God phenomenon and I'll go through that a bit more. Um, yeah I might start with this little poster here right, which um, this is what we took to the entity working through John of God um, in the second week that we were there and this is how we gained permission to do a Melbourne to Sydney group tour right? uh, and, and as I said that's that's in November if people want to join the tour yeah uh, it's high time to get into it right? uh, we've got good accommodation we've got recommendations for uh, the travel and the meeting place and it's a it's a group tour. In other words, we're all going to support each other. Now, certainly you can do it on your own, but um, you might feel more comfortable in a group. Okay, and I'll talk about that more later as well. Um, I'll just show you uh, the, the place to start, perhaps. Uh, well, apart from our website, there's um, the John of God Sydney website. You can see that clearly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That's the venue information. At Sydney Olympic Park. It's going to be a big event. And the thousands of people there. And it is useful to have guidance because, uh, you know, because of some of the complex interactions. And if we're as a group, we'll try and go all in as a group. Uh, we'll look at a few more pages. That's the event information. So if you are interested in going, uh, then I would encourage you to look through and read all the information. And there's additional information we're going to supply before the event. Uh, it's another page. You frequently asked questions. So you might have questions 
and the first resource you can uh, look up is perhaps this page. There's plenty of information there and this other page here is the, the payment page. There is a payment plan so you can schedule your payments or you can just do a full upfront payment. Uh, if I go to our own website make my house uh, there's lots of stuff here that's the cinemas that we're running some of the uh, the agendas that we're uh, supporting perhaps and in a couple of weeks we've actually got a crystal bed healing weekend uh, some of you might be familiar with the crystal bed uh, it's it's designed by the entities of John and God Right, so designed by the designed by the divine beings, um, and it's a series of seven crystals. The light shines down. Each one of those lights corresponds to a chakra, and it, it provides physical, mental, and emotional healing. The same as uh, yoga, actually. Right, so there's two ways to get well. You, you, you can either have a crystal bed session, or you can do some yoga. But I'll, I'll cover that uh, a little bit more later as well. Uh, so on our website there is a link for the John of God Melbourne the Sydney group tool and it says try again whoops <laughs> <laughs> anyway when you click on that it's got some detailed information of what you can um, uh, about the accommodation the, the uh, travel um, and the recommendations that we put together for joining the event okay now uh, I've got lots of uh, John of God resources uh, with me. These are some of the books, Spiritual Cures. Uh, it, it, it's a, a very well, very comprehensive description of some of the uh, background and the entities. There's a legal basis to this as well. Uh, some of the stuff that John of God is doing and, and Arrigo used to do is um, <laughs> upsets some people, perhaps in the medical establishment, uh, and perhaps in uh, the authoritarian establishment, but we're finding that more and more medical and author authoritarian people are going to John of God. Uh, so, there's that one, there's this book, the Book of Miracles, um, providing a lot of information. There's another book, no, that could be it for now. Uh, there's also DVDs, and we should have enough time to show some of this. There's a couple of short videos I'd like to show. Uh, one is about visible surgeries and testimonials. The other one's... Um, what's the other one? Well, that's the two, isn't it? The surgeries and the testimonials. Okay. Uh, that's a movie we showed at Make by House last year, a healing DVD. And yeah, we had about 30 people in the room. And when it came to some of the visible surgeries, I'll just give you some forewarning. We all sat there going, ugh, at some of the operations, because they're, they're pretty dramatic. And um, <clears throat> we're, what, we, what we hear back is, there's no pain, it might be uncomfortable for some people, but there's no suffering as far as we, we're, as we know. There's, there's healing. Um, another DVD that we've shown this year uh, describes jo Joel de Dius, uh, Just a Man. And he's, he's a, a businessman as well. Uh, and he spends three days of his life per week doing the channelings. Of course, he's not there, he's like asleep. Uh, so he loses three days of his life per week to do what he's doing, to do serving. And the rest of the time, he's just like you and I, running a business, we've got a family um, in the township, of, small township of Abadania. Uh, he does a lot of uh, charity work as well, from what we can see. Uh, he's, he's set up um, uh, food places, I don't know what you call them, 
soup kitchens. Yeah. And this is a very special movie, Astral City, A Spiritual Journey. Uh, the, the author of the movie is Chico Xavier, who in a way pre predecessors both John of God and Arrigo and is a bit of a mentor to both of them from what I understand. Um, and it describes the afterlife experience you know, in a lot of detail. And uh, part of the, the significance of my journey to all this is, yes, I confer with this information. Um, I was given this same sort of information about 30 years ago. It started with this phenomenal book, Mind Over Matter. Uh, it completely opened up my world. Uh, before coming across this information, I had the regular education and uh, a bit of Greek Orthodox um, interaction. And the future just looked horribly black uh, because they don't show you anything about this, this sort of stuff. Uh, and when I, when I read that book, uh, it opened up my world. Um, the fear just vanished completely. Right, so it's a great place to be, to be um, in touch with this sort of information. And that's why um, uh, we're getting it out there. Okay. There's a few more resources, oh, some travel, travel resources. Some great, great information there. Brazil, Portu Portuguese uh, in Brazil. That was handy. Uh, what else we've got? A couple of articles. Uh, we've also got the Casa Song book. We might even have a song if we get time later. Uh, because that's, that's one of the features of the Casa. They do um, a Sunday morning service and uh, lots of wonderful songs. Okay. We really need a song. Right? Sorry? We really need a song. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah cool. I, get, I bet you haven't had one before. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I'd like to review the article uh, that appeared in the, um, where is it? Not for Living Now. Well, there was one for Living Now as well. Oh, here we are. We had an article published in the Alternative Voice, and I'll just review some of that information. Save me having to, to write a speech, in a way. Okay. There's a, there's a very powerful quote uh, from St. Ignatius, uh, who's one of the main, um, uh, the most, one of the most prominent uh, spiritual entities working through John of God, apparently there's thousands. And uh, the quote is, for those who believe, no words are necessary, and for those who do not believe, no words are possible. And that's interesting because in both cases it comes from the silence, right? So for those who don't believe, or well, for those who believe no words are necessary, it can be from the silence, and for those who do not believe no words are possible, there's nothing you can say, you might as well stay in the silence. All you can do is present the information and um, try and inspire people to see whether uh, they'll accept that information. Uh, so that's the words of Saint Ignatius of Loyola, born 1491 in Spain. And I'm not sure if he made that quote back then or, or has, has given it uh, more recently through John of Rome. Uh, these days, Saint Ignatius is a spiritual entity who works through medium, the medium. Um, yeah, and for decades since childhood, Joao de Jus has served as a medium to thousands of entities, deceased spirits, offering profound psychic and physical healing surgeries on often thousands of people per day. At the Casa Dom Inacio, the house, it, it's, it's called the House of Saint Ignatius of Loyola. And that's in central Brazil. And myself and Christine uh, joined the pilgrimage uh, of millions 
with millions of people. Uh, I think something like 18 million people <coughs> have um, had a personal <coughs> encounter with the entity. Um, yeah, we joined the, the pilgrimage um, to this place of spiritual cures. And while we were over there, we personally endured an operation, spiritual surgery, that deals and heals conditions considered impossible with modern medical science. Okay, so we witnessed with our own eyes the physical surgeries through the, en the entity, um, or through the, the medium. And he, he almost pushes them up against the wall, grabs the abdomen, and then slices it open. He doesn't waste any time. I mean, you can't protest. <laughs> um, so we witnessed a couple of those, and he wasn't very far away. You know, he was just over there. And from what we could see, well, it wasn't any trick. It wasn't a magic trick. It was the real thing. Um, and then he stitched them up. And after putting his fingers in, he, he stitched them up. And of course, that would be a very painful procedure uh, in the medical world. And of course, that featured no sterilization, all without pain, and just a little bit of blood. Yeah, those sort of surgeries, well, they're not going to happen in Sydney, they only happen in Brazil. Uh, the, uh, so don't worry if you do go there, they're not going to slice you up and, and sit you up. Uh, they're actually not necessary and they're quite rare. And uh, uh, from what I can tell, it's, it helps to garnish the belief system of those who doubt and is often a public display. And if you want to, there's many John of God uh, surgery videos on YouTube you can look up. <coughs> Uh, Christine also witnessed a, uh, I call a, a horror style oh. surgery. <laughs> well, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Um, where a, a hemostat, it's a, a surgical instrument, about six inches or more, more than six inches long, and he pushes it up the uh, into the nose of the recipient, and it's going straight into the brain. Uh, it, it's just bizarre. <laughs> um. can, I, can I just interrupt you there, please, Mike? Go on. The, the hemostat was this long, and he put a piece of cotton wool, as everybody, people who've been on the, on the end, and he pushed his up. I mean, it's really far, you've got your two handles just sticking at the end, so it's not like it's on the fold or anything, so there's no trick here. And up it went, and then that way, and then twist. <laughs> And then he pulls it out, and then it's got some blood on it. But on, um... Do you want me to say it on the video? No, hang on. On, yeah. um... Okay. Good Friday. Easter, yeah, Good Friday. Up went it, up it went, and it came out, and the cotton wool on the end was white. And he said, on Good Friday we can't draw blood. Oh. And there was, it was white. No blood whatsoever. I was blown away. That made me sit up and look. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, unfortunately, I didn't see that uh, live, but it is on the video. Right? Uh, if you're dying to see something like uh, that, yes. then you can watch it on the video. Yeah. One, of, one of the people that went uh, came to our movie, he had the, uh, the eye scraping, right? and uh, what he describes is it was uncomfortable, but it didn't hurt. Yeah, normally it would hurt like hell. <laughs> okay. um, and for us, this truly was a pilgrimage. Um, around 25 years ago, we read the book, Arrigo, Surgeon of the Rusty Knife, considered the predecessor to John of God. I think they all uh, they knew each other, uh, also in central Brazil. And uh, the big difference is only a single entity worked through Arrigo. Uh, uh, and that was uh, Dr. Fritz, a German doctor who died in the 1940s. So they can't they can identify who the, uh, the spiritual beings are. So where did the predecessor finish? When he died. Oh, yeah. 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 When he passed away. Yes, when was that? How long ago? Well, John's been doing it for 40 years. 40. Oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah. I had that surgeon of the rusty knife with about 35 years ago. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah it's a marvellous book. Yeah. I've still got it at home, if you want it. Yeah, that's not quite... I haven't got the book with me. Um, but that's a copy of another version of it. There we go. The amazing story of the Brazilian peasant who slashed his patients with rusty knives, used no an anaesthetics and had no medical training, yet confounded the world with thousands of miraculous cures. And being in a Catholic uh, dominated society, he, <laughs> he went through quite a, um, a very difficult time trying to reconcile what he was doing. But the entity coming through was so powerful in the end he gave up, opened up his doors to his home and he was seeing hundreds of people per day, including some of the, uh, the, the country's leaders as well. So there's a, a huge amount of testimony. Uh, the book itself, if you read it, is life-changing. It, it, it kind of changed my life. Um, and that, that's one of the major catalysts for Make by House as well. Okay. Uh, Yeah, he was performing scientifically unexplainable surgeries with rusty pen knives, with healings numbering thousands of people per day. Criminal lawsuits dramatically reduced the physical surgery activity, but he continued healings with psychic surgery and absolutely bizarre prescriptions which always seemed effective. Now, the author of the book, uh, John Grant Fuller, describes how Dr. Fritz, occupying Arrigo's body, ordered um, John, uh, the author of the book, to hold the knife. You know, so uh, the author of the book held the knife like this, and Arrigo held his knife, uh, held his, his wrist. Okay. And uh, and part, perhaps the incentive was that so he would report on this, and he could write about this. And what John reported was, while it's being thrust into a patient's eye, uh, with Dr. Dr. Fritz uh, firmly holding the wrist, uh, the author reported that the, the tool was solidly guided. It would not go where it shouldn't go. Right, so if he tried to go somewhere else, it wouldn't go. It was like it was guided into position. Right. All, the, all this evidence tells us the reality is not what it seems. Uh, and that's, that's that major inspiration. Uh, it opens up the floodgates for all the other stuff. Uh, but you've got to be careful. There's a lot of charlatans out there as well. Yeah, it also promotes the idea that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and not the other way around. And as we are all divine, then the quote, this quote makes perfect sense. And I put this quote on the original poster that I, that I took to uh, the entities. Uh, why, are, why are you amazed? These things are more you will do also. Okay. So these times are upon us, representing a second coming as a mass awakening of humanity and a fulfillment of that particular prophecy. Yes, yeah, paraphrase, paraphrase from the Bible. Uh, Christine's psychic <coughs> operation in the first week <coughs> featured a dramatic healing of her lower spine, uh, is it L4 and L5 or is it more? It's L4, L5 and the hips. And the hips, yes. Yeah. Um, they were worn down, the, 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 the discs in between are worn down to 20%. 20%. Right? And that made it very difficult for Christine to get into a um, uh, an exercise program. Uh, certainly difficult in a yoga class. <laughs> 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 Very, very frustrating for both of us, perhaps. Um, and there were there were also uh, migraine headaches as well. But since the psychic operation, uh, Christine hasn't had one of those debilitating 
migraine headaches and her exercise and, and general mobility has improved dramatically. Right, so we're extremely grateful for that. You know, I'm excited about it. You know. <laughs> Not as excited as I am, George. Not as excited as I am. Yeah, do you want to say anything on? No, no, no. Well, um, George mentioned that we both endured a, a healing, but it wasn't enduring, it was a blessing. And there was no pain whatsoever. Uh, all you did was sit in a chair, you put your hand, and I just said what I wanted and thank you. And I just felt them working on my lower back and my hips. Got up, went to bed for 24 hours, and that was it. You know, but after that, the next day after I got up, I had to be careful because I did have an operation, and I did get tired very, very easily. Anybody who's done it knows what I'm talking about. There, mm -hmm. but it was um, uh, the best operation I've ever had. She also made a comment that she wouldn't have been able to climb all around Machu Picchu just uh, a couple of weeks later. Oh, no. mm -hmm. that time I, should, I should show you some photos of that. Well, our own visit to the, the Casa house uh, had, had some synchronistic surprises as well. In the second week, uh, uh, you go back for a, a revision and uh, for some bizarre reason, uh, we ended up in the wrong line. And I, uh, I was following Christine through the meditators and I was hot on her heels, you know, I was almost stepping on her heels. And she got diverted one way, and I got diverted another way, and there was there's no way I could go to um, go where Christine was going. And um, I said to the to the people there, I said, oh, I'm supposed to be going, and they're going shh like <laughs> this, and they they diverted me into the uh, the operation. Right? I didn't need an operation. I'm a yoga teacher. <laughs> and. Um, in, in the first week, I was just given herbs. The second week, I got diverted into the wrong line and I, I ended up in the operation room. And there was about a hundred people in there, all sitting in the pews. And I can, uh, I can tell you, there was no escape, right? <laughs> I was right in the middle and people are sitting very close together. Now, you're, you're supposed to think about what the thing that you want healed. Now, a, a couple of days before, two or three days before, I came down with it a very heavy cold. You know, I, was, I was sneezing all the time, uh, my sinuses were running, uh, and it was pretty uncomfortable. And here I am sitting in the, in, in the operation room, or we're sitting there meditating, and I'm thinking, I don't want to sneeze, I don't want to sneeze. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? The, the symptoms vanished, mm -hmm. and the, the cold vanished that day as well. You know, normally the, there might be a 10 day incubation period and I take the view that um, that wasn't a coincidence. Mm -hmm. I was manipulated into that. Now, I'm very grateful for it. You know, it got rid of the cold for one thing and uh, it gave me a dramatic uh, demonstration which um, I can share with everyone. Yeah. I'll say a, a few things about the yoga system, yeah, and that's be, that's also because uh, well, I'll also talk about the crystal bed. Uh, I mentioned the crystal bed, you know, a series of seven crystals. Uh, they, they must have about ten rooms uh, of crystal beds at the casa, uh, and the seven uh, crystals, the light shining through them, and when you lie underneath them. You can get healing comparable. Well, apparently it's the entities coming through. Uh, it was designed by the entities. Um, now, just a few people have got uh, uh, the uh, crystal beds outside of Brazil. You know, they, they brought them outside of Brazil, and we do have a, a crystal bed healing weekend coming up, uh, and that's in two weeks. It's on the little pamphlet, if you'd like the book. Um, and, yeah, what, what I've written here is, the yoga system provides healing in a similar way by stimulating the glands, <coughs> the glands are the master of the controllers of the body. 
and each chakra has got a corresponding gland. Right? So when you work the body, you're actually working the glands, which stimulates healing. Okay? Um, and that's on both the energetic and the physical levels. Just as with the crystal bed, it works on the chakras, and both are described as providing physical, mental, and emotional healing. And that's an alternative to traveling to, to Brazil. Come and join our, our yoga classes if you like. Okay. <clears throat> While we were there on the second week, we also presented 50 photos to the entities. Um, and it was quite remarkable how quickly he went through them. Uh, you know, he got hundreds of people to see a day. And uh, it took probably half a second or, or, or under a second per photo for him to analyse and he wrote a script for each one of them. So we very carefully put that together and we went and bought the herbs and distributed to them, to our friends and family, you know, whoever put in for it. Uh, can I just say? Yep. Because we had so many uh, scripts, we go, oh, but they're all scribbled, just scribbled. And we're looking at them and going, oh, they're all the same, and you just, it's doing this. But then I noticed there were subtle differences in each one of them. And one of them was completely different altogether. And that was fascinating to me. But we also had more than the photos we had, and there's a lot of photos that dropped out and we don't know why or where they went. And one particular woman was really distressed that we didn't come back with a, a herbal remedy for her. And it's uh, the herbs are made of passiflora, which is passion flower. And um, after a, uh, a few months, I was discussing it with her, and then she casually mentioned how she's allergic to passion flower. <laughs> and I thought, well, here you go, that's why it dropped out, yeah. because you couldn't have them. But the ones up in Sydney, they're going to use water, as the because uh, they can't bring the herbs out. Yeah, the blessed water. Yeah, they're going to use water as the medicine, not the herbs, because the government won't let them bring them out. Mm -hmm. Well, so I thought that was a fascinating little event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the herbs you can't bring out, yes. you either have to buy them here, I think? No, no, they're going to infuse water with the energy that, that, that you need from you. Because it's an energetic thing. Right. Yeah, the entity, while he was doing that script process, he even uh, looked at his watch <coughs> just to say, hurry up, I've got, I've got work to do. <laughs> it takes a few minutes to get through all those photos. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, nobody misses out, uh, by the way. Uh, if you go to one of these events and there's thousands of people, nobody misses out. So the exciting news is that John of God is scheduled to visit Sydney in November 2014 to offer healings for ailments considered med medically incurable. Uh, and that's following uh, successful tours in Germany, Austria, Greece and New Zealand. There might be some others. Yeah. And the John of God entities authorised our proposed Melbourne to Sydney group tour. He gave us a, a nod and a smile, which was nice. Yeah. And we can consider this a, a great honour. Uh, my last par paragraph on this particular article relates to how science is catching up. Uh, maybe it's getting a little inkling of, um, of uh, multi-dimensional energies. It's catching up with ancient spiritual wisdom, with technological devices that both detect and manipulate the human energy field. Uh, with real-time video that sees the meridians, the life force, and even the chakras. Uh, frequency or vibrational medicine is at the core of many natural therapies, such as aromatherapy, homeopathy, Reiki, and other hands-on healing. But we now can use very sophisticated technology and software to both analyze and heal thousands of frequencies at once, similar to the thousands of entities working through John of God, or anyone who is capable of manipulating the human energy field. 
Uh, this exciting news indicates New Age medicine now complements spiritual medicine and is, and is also miraculous. Um, as is yoga therapy, of course. Yeah. And so we can truly express why are you amazed as we move from a, a materialistic to a spiritual era for humanity. It's, it's like, like I said before, it's, it's like a fulfillment of that prophecy. Uh, and what I might do is... Um, oh yeah, I was going to show a, a short video on Arigo. I think it's uh, very relevant to, um, to today's presentation. In 1963 and 1968, Professor Henry Puharic took some colleagues to Congonas do Campo in Brazil in order to investigate the fame of an amazing man called Arrigo, or Zia Rigo, Surgeon of the Rusty Knife. Puharic was an inventor, academic and noted researcher into parapsychology. He had written many books including The Sacred Mushroom and worked with seers such as Peter Herkos and Yuri Geller in the United States. Puharic was not a man easily impressed. But what he found in Brazil astounded him, and the 8mm films he brought back of Arrigo at work show the Brazilian peasant's astonishing powers. Although Arrigo was celebrated in his native country at the time, it's only through the work of Puharic and the writer John G. Fuller that we know his story. I wanted to ask why the medical establishment and the Catholic Church persecuted Arrigo. It's an established fact that Arrigo could th cut through the flesh with an unclean kitchen or pocket knife and there would be no pain, no bleeding and no need for stitches. It's a fact that he could stop the flow of blood with a sharp verbal command. It's a fact that there would be no ensuing infection even though there was no antiseptic. It's a fact that he could swiftly write sophisticated prescriptions of modern pharmacology, yet he never went beyond third grade and never studied the subject. It's a fact that both Brazilian and American doctors have verified Arrigo's healings and that he treated over 300 patients a day for nearly 20 years and never charged for his services. Amongst his patients were leading executives, statesmen, lawyers, scientists, doctors, aristocrats from many countries as well as the poor and desolate. It's a fact that Brazil's former president, Juscelino Kubitschek, the creator of the capital city of Brasilia and himself a doctor, brought his daughter to Arrigo for successful treatment. It's a fact that Arrigo brought about medically confirmed cures in cases of cancer and other fatal diseases that have been given up as hopeless by doctors and hospitals throughout the Western world. There were nearly 200 people in the streets as the doors to the clinic, a dilapidated church, opened. The multitude stood mutely in line all along the street. A crucifix was behind them with a picture of Christ on the wall. Where Arrigo worked, there was only a chair and a crude wooden table. Arrigo stepped to the centre of the room, speaking Portuguese in a rough, peasant accent. Arrigo explained that it was not he, but Jesus that brought about the cures. He said he knew the anguish of the paralytics and the despair of the ill. He denounced the primitive, ritualistic sects of Kimbanda he also denounced smoking and alcohol in the strongest terms. He led a recital of the Lord's Prayer and went into his cubicle. Buharek felt as if he was watching a scene from the Twilight Zone. So strange and surreal was the atmosphere. Quiet chaos, expectancy and despair. When he came out, Arrigo seemed a different man. He now spoke sharply, like a Prussian officer, Portuguese in a thick, German accent, harsh and guttural. He took the first man in line, firmly grasped his shoulders, held him up against the wall, directly under the sign, Think of Jesus. Arrigo wiped the four-inch stainless steel paring knife on his shirt and literally plunged it into the man's eye.
minute later, Arrigo said, You will be well, my friend. Puharit was incredulous as people moved up in line to the table, rich and poor, of all ages. Arrigo would barely glance at them. Occasionally he would rise, place a patient against the wall, wipe the paring knife on his shirt again, drive it brutally into a tumour or cyst or another eye or ear, and remove whatever the offending tissue was in a matter of seconds. There was no anaesthesia, no hypnotic suggestion, no antisepsis, and practically no bleeding beyond the trickle. He rarely asked the question of a patient. His diagnosis was wordless and immediate. By 11 in the morning, Arrigo had treated some 200 patients. A dozen or so he sent away summarily, gruffly telling them that any ordinary doctor could handle their complaints. Kuharek noted later, Arrigo grabbed my right hand, thrust the knife into it, and closed his hand around mine, so that the knife was doubly enclosed. Then he ordered me to put the knife in the eye socket. It felt as if you take a pair of magnets and bring the light poles towards each other. You experience a repulsive force between the two light poles. When I moved the knife into the tissues of the eyeball, I felt a repulsive force. No matter how hard I pressed, there was an equal and opposite force acting on my knife to prevent it from touching the tissues. This repulsive force was the secret of why no one felt pain when the ego operated. Arrigo was born on the 18th of October 1921, a simple, devout and humble family man and the father of five children. Arrigo's story is hard to believe. He frequently climbed the hill to the Church of Bon Jesus to pray, having been beset by blinding headaches and hallucinations. There, the spirit of a fat, bald-headed doctor identified himself as Dr. Adolfo Fritz. Fritz had died during the First World War and his work on Earth had not been completed. He had observed Arrigo for a long time and knew of his generosity and love. He had chosen Arrigo as the living vessel to carry on his work, with the help of other spirits who were doctors before they died. To be free of the headaches and hallucinations, Arrigo would have to take the crucifix he had found on his father's farm, hold it in his hand and begin serving the sick and disturbed people who needed him. The doctor standing before him in the church was so real, and the instructions so far-fetched, and the fear so great within Arrigo, that he ran through the streets screaming. A crowd gathered, and the priest and doctor summoned. They wondered if he had been affected by primitive magic, either Kimbanda, or even the intellectual spiritism of the Kardecists, the followers of Alan Kardec. What Arrigo was telling Father Panido about the dreams and hallucinations was alarming to the church, because it was indicative of what many spiritist healers had claimed was a sign of the development of a medium. Arrigo was a solid Catholic. He knew little or nothing about Alan Kardec. With his peculiar, untutored charisma, he could become dangerous to the church establishment if he leaned towards the work of the healer. The priest decided on the need for an exorcism. It was carried out with ancient and elaborate ceremony. But the spirits were apparently not listening. Despite being warned by Father Panido, Arrigo now had the ability to heal. At first he only experimented with friends and found he could make them well simply by verbal command. They reported that whatever he had done worked, although he had no memory of giving these commands. But his headaches and hallucinations stopped when he gave in to the impulses prescribed by Dr. Fritz. John G. Fuller's amazing book, Arrigo, Surgeon of the Rusty Knife, describes the many incredible feats of Arrigo. Those in less advanced countries seem to be much more accepting of this sort of phenomena. Arrigo was certainly a legend in his native country. The church ordered Arrigo to stop his work, and since Article 284 of the Penal Code provided that the simple act of prescribing, operating or making hypnotic passes was illegal, Arrigo's success would convict him. This article of law made spiritual healing a crime. 
At his trial, Arrigo said, I don't even know myself whether I practice illegal medicine or not. All I know is that whenever anybody comes to me for material or spiritual help, I must try to help them. I will not turn them away. I tell them to ask God for good health. I start with the Lord's Prayer, and from that moment on, I don't remember what I do. I am in a state that I do not understand. On 29th of March 1957, Arrigo was found guilty and sentenced to one year and three months in prison and fined 5,000 cruzeros. Although the church and the medical society stayed in the background during the trial, this fooled hardly anyone. Most people knew that both organisations were behind the prosecution. Arrigo served two months in prison before President Kubitschek pardoned him, but for the rest of his life Arrigo was stalked and balked by the medical establishment and by the Catholic Church. Why the medical establishment persecuted Arrigo is a no-brainer, but why did the Catholic Church persecute a man who gave all credit for his healing to Jesus Christ? A man who healed hundreds of people every day for nearly 20 years and never took any payment. so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Rigo was killed in a car accident on the 11th of January 1971, aged 49. His death was front page news all over Brazil. <laughs>